What if the past had turned out differently? The Green Bay Packers have won the Super Bowl. I was told that playing in Green Bay was not an option. With the 24th selection in the 2005 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Aaron Rodgers, quarterback, California. And Mikowski appears hurt. Uh, Mikowski's in great pain, Ahmad. And reliable sources now tell CBS Sports that Parcells is very close to accepting a Green Bay Packers offer. Gentlemen, let me introduce to you the new head coach of the Green Bay Packers, Mr. Phil Bankston. What would the past look like? What would the future look like if? And with that, we've begun another What If segment. This is What If number four, and we actually get to talk about something that's referenced in our intro there. What if Bill Parcells had been hired to be the head coach of the Green Bay Packers in 1992? And with a little bit of history on that before we begin our debate, here is the backstory. On November 20th, 1991, Packers President Bob Harlan had finally seen enough losing. He fired Executive Vice President of Football Operations and General Manager Tom Bratz, who had been in charge of the Packers since 1987. One week later, Bob Harlan entrusted the on-field product of the Green Bay Packers to one man, Ron Wolf. Wolf was given total authority to conduct football operations, and his first major move was to fire head coach Lindy Infante after another 4-12 campaign. Though showing occasional glimpses of promise, Infante's Packers only went 24-40 and 40 in his four seasons. Ron Wolf wanted to find his guy to run the team. There were many high-profile assistants, former head coaches, and college coaches that were looking to fill the eight head coaching vacancies available after the 1991 season, but Ron Wolf had one man at the top of his list, former New York Giants Super Bowl winning coach Bill Parcells. Parcells was the head coach of the New York Giants from 1983 to 1990. In that time frame, his Giants made five playoff appearances, won three division championships, and won Super Bowls after the 1986 and 1990 seasons. Parcells would retire after the Giants' Super Bowl 25 victory and spent the 1991 season as a commentator for NBC. As the season came to a close, rumors started swirling that Parcells might be interested in returning to coaching, and the Packers had him at the top of their list. They weren't the only team calling, however. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers also aggressively pursued Parcells. There were reports nearly every day that he had signed with either the Bucks or the Packers, all of which were always denied by the Parcells camp. Eventually, both teams were tired of the nearly three-week drama, and both dropped their consideration. Days later, the Packers came to terms with their second choice, San Francisco 49ers offensive coordinator Mike Holmgren. The rest, they say, is history. But what if Bill Parcells had accepted the job? How do the Packers fare with Parcells at the helm? Where does Mike Holmgren end up? And what does this change do to the landscape of the NFL in the 1990s? What if the Green Bay Packers had hired Bill Parcells in 1992? All right, and there's a lot to take in there, but there's the backstory to the Bill Parcells Packers drama that played itself out in late 91, early 92. Uh, Matt, would you like to give your opinions first here? Sure. So I, I was doing a little bit of research on this earlier today, um, and kind of what I found was kind of what you'd mentioned in, in the intro there about how he was going back and forth. Um, and one of the reports that I read said that he... I don't know if this was true or not. It might have been more of a Buccaneers report that their general manager at the time and owner thought that they had Parcells signed. Um, and the day before he was supposed to be announced, he turned, he withdrew his, um, his himself for candidacy and and said he wasn't coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in terms of that, I guess um, if he gets hired with the Packers here, obviously that means no home grin. Um, but but we still have Ron Wolf. That's like thing that kind of throws me is you kind of wonder who you know, what players we still get and don't get mm-hmm. uh, if we have Wolf and not Holmgren um, if we have Bill Parcells um, so I the one that stuck out, stuck out in my mind was maybe Reggie White doesn't come here I know there's that big backstory about how Holmgren called Reggie's house and said that it was God calling and that he <laughs> needed to go to the Packers yeah I kind of feel like it maybe it had a little bit more to do with the money <laughs> than that phone call personally, but mm-hmm. um, so in terms of personnel, I don't know. Do you, do you really think we're that different, and are their coaching styles that different that it would have made that much of an impact, do you think, if we had uh, Parcells instead of Holmgren? Well, the, the big one for me is I think regardless of who the head coach is, Ron Wolf is bringing Brett Favre in. Right. And the thing is, I guess, how do you 
think Brett Favre would fare with Bill Parcells. And, and that's the one that's really tough because when you think of Bill Parcells, you think of Phil Sims, you think of any Testaverde. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, Drew Bledsoe was pretty prolific under uh, Bill Parcells. Uh, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the league when Bill Parcells was there. And they threw it a ton. They threw it, as a matter of fact, they threw it more than the Packers did. Uh, a couple of those times they went to the playoffs with Parcells there. And in 94, they, they threw the ball more than anybody in football. Would he have been as patient with Brett Favre as Mike Holmgren was is the big question. And he was definitely patient with Drew Bledsoe, but they had nobody else there. If you look at this with the Packers, if they could have settled things, especially with Parcells coming in as a proven guy, they had Mike Tomczak on the roster. Maybe he doesn't hold out. You have Don Mikowski, who was a few votes from being the 89 NFL MVP. Uh, you have uh, they had Ty Detmer on the roster, which he was a, a good college player. You, you almost wonder if Bill Parcells is there, if Brett Favre doesn't have his Iron Man streak because he's getting benched you know, after he stinks it up against the Giants in 92 or he stinks it up against the Vikings in... Uh, 93, and they try somebody else. Yeah, it, I guess it's possible. I, I, I just keep thinking about the Drew Bledsoe situation, and I know he didn't really have anybody behind him then, but but he stuck with him. He was a, a young quarterback. When did Parcells take over New England, 94, 95? 93. 93, so he was there for all of Bledsoe's career. I believe he was drafted in 93, yep, right? Picked, uh, and, and that might be another thing, as opposed to tra- trading for some guy, one of your two first-round draft choices, you trade for Brett Favre. Um, you, you get uh, Drew Bledsoe. I mean, I mean, Brett Favre is kind of a. It's not as the investment that Drew Bledsoe was. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, I just think that if he would have went to the guys behind him, you're right. Maybe Brett's streak isn't there. Maybe, but it's still probably long. Maybe it got busted up a little in the beginning. But the guys you mentioned, Mike Tomczak, Ty Detmer, even Mikowski, uh I don't know. I just don't see any of those guys. If, if even if Favre gets benched, maybe a game or two, really consistently beating out Brett and mm-hmm. and Mikowski did even with Holmgren he he was the starter until he got hurt yeah and yeah that's he true. couldn't really do anything about it and <laughs> once Brett came in and was playing great and I guess everybody probably had had a little bit enough of Mikowski at that point too I guess now that I think of it I think maybe Favre and his relationship would have been a little rocky uh not that Holmgren was you know Tony Dungy or anything when he was dealing with Brett Favre either you got to think maybe that if he would stick with Quincy Carter, he certainly got to stick with Brett Favre, right? I mean, I know we're not supposed to go that far into the future, but if we're mm-hmm. trying to analyze the man, Bill Parcells, that's certainly relevant information. Yeah, and you know, who knows? Maybe Brett doesn't go through. I know Holmgren was is pretty hard on the players too, but maybe Brett doesn't go through some of the problems he had, you know, with some of the off the field stuff too. If he's under, you know, a, basically a dictator in Parcells, maybe mm-hmm. that kind of stuff works out different. I guess in terms of their coaching styles, I think, knowing he has Brett Favre, just like he knew he had Drew Blood, so I think he kind of adapts and does more of a passing style than we saw with New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know how much of a difference this really makes. I think, I think him Did and Holmgren. Did they win the Super Bowl? I think so, and maybe you know if the the personnel's the same, maybe you know I I'm I think Parcells is pretty good. I I'm a huge fan of Holmgren, obviously. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're that different, I guess, in terms of how the offense was run. I think their defenses both would have been. You know, stout either way. I, so they swap possibly coming in in '92, and then you know how Parcells is. I think he left New England what the year after the Super Bowl. Uh, he left the year. He left right after the Super Bowl. Right after the Super Bowl. So maybe we we lose him after '96, and you know our coaching carousel down the road is different just because he likes to kind of swap around a little more. But I mean, Holmgren left after '98 anyways. So maybe just those two years makes a difference. Maybe we have somebody different now in the future. But I mm-hmm. think in terms of that team, the 96 team, and what happened before that, I guess I don't think too much would have changed. See, that's the thing I guess I don't really agree with you on, is Bill Parcells, after he left the Giants, obviously he was with New York for eight seasons. He never went anywhere that long again. He was only in New England for four years. I am wondering that if he has the resolve and the commitment to stay with the team through 96. Because uh, think of Holmgren. Holmgren's start, I mean, comparatively, uh, it was a very, very good start for Holmgren compared to all the other guys that they had since Vince Lombardi. But it was nine and seven, nine and seven, enormous expectations in '94, and then they have to go on a three-game run at the end of the season to go nine and seven again. 
Uh, so I almost wonder what happens to Parcells. That's the kind of the thing that scares me is does he want to stick around after three nine and sevens in a row or after a three nine and sevens and then doing what he did with the Jets, losing a nail biter to the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game in ninety five and saying, Okay, yep, that's good enough for me. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's it's hard to ju- judge. You know, Parcells, you're right. He likes to has been known to kind of jump around a little bit and not really stick things through. But I, I would think just with three nine and seven seasons, if they do go the same, I think he probably at least toughs it out through ninety five, and after that good season, maybe sticks around again with everybody coming back and being Super Bowl favorites. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I think he stays around at least till after the Super Bowl win, and maybe if he gets a Super Bowl win, maybe he doesn't come back, mm-hmm. you know, right away with somebody else, and maybe he probably would have come back eventually, knowing him, but. I guess the other thing we could talk about real quick here, too, is Mike Holmgren and what that means as far as the landscape of the NFL. Uh, real quick from what I saw, uh, Holmgren was also Tampa's first choice if they couldn't get Parcells. He had interviewed with Tampa, Indianapolis, who went on to hire Ted Marchabroda, the Rams, who hired Chuck Knox. Uh, he interviewed with Pittsburgh, but was considered a long shot to get that job. Of course, they hired Bill Cowher, and the Vikings had requested an interview, but he canceled it. So he likely would have went to one of those teams. You want to speculate on what happens if one of those teams is better? I guess I would just maybe speculate that he goes to Tampa. It just seemed like that was the other hot job at the time, I guess, with Parcells debating between Green Bay and Tampa. So Mm -hmm. if he goes to Tampa, he's not making front office moves. He's not getting hired as a GM. Probably has pretty much the same roster that they had with Dungy. Um, And that's kind of when they started getting better, what, 96, 97, they started getting a little bit better. Yeah, but they were still pretty rotten with uh, Sam Weish in uh, 92 through 95. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't stick that, you know, maybe he gets fired after a few years after, you know, not a, I, I think he's a better coach than Sam Weish. I don't know, maybe it changes their record by a couple games, a couple of those seasons, and and who knows how long he stays around there, but I don't think anything drastically changes. I don't think they make the Super Bowl back then with Trent Dilfer at the helm or anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't think that as much, but I think they're better. I think they might have been a playoff contender, because you got to think here. Granted, the Packers were the Packers were underachievers, I would say, under Infante, because they certainly had talent. They had a top... They actually, in 1991, they had the 10th best defense in the league in terms of yards. Uh, they had uh, some other t- uh, defensive statistics that really stood out during that it- Lindy Infante era. They had, you know, they had Sterling Sharp. Uh, they had some other guys. They had uh, Tony Bennett. They had Leroy Butler. They had some guys on the team that could play, uh, maybe a little more than Tampa Bay. But you remember, as far as the... Tr- it's, it's hard to think of that now because we think it crummy Tampa Bay and then the the 90s Packers, you know, one of the definitive teams of the decade. The starting point after the 91 season was pretty similar uh, as far as what Tampa and the Packers had done in the previous decade. So I I wouldn't rule out the fact that he could have revived that team. I, I... he did a lot of great things with the Packers, but when it was all said and done, you know, they only won one Super Bowl, they went back to another. I don't know if he does that with Tampa, but to think that he couldn't have been as successful as Dennis Green's Vikings, I, I definitely wouldn't have ruled out that. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you there. I'd maybe make a couple of games different a season, but yeah, I, I don't even necessarily know if I see him as a playoff contender like you. I, I just don't think those Tampa teams were talented enough. That's when they started drafting guys like Warren Sapp and, mm-hmm. and Derek Brooks, but uh, from the time frame, he probably would have been there. I don't know if it would have been too much of a difference. Okay, well, uh, I think the one thing we can agree on that we could etch in stone about this one is that if Parcells would have been hired by the Packers, Dave Meggett would have been a Packer. 